once I made a video, sorry. I've been very busy with baking baby number two, looking after a toddler and work, so it's been a bit crazy. But it is the summer holidays now, and recently we've been doing a little bit of work on our play space for Josh. So today I thought I would do a video on filming our play areas and how it works for us and our family. I would love to have a playroom if we had a big enough house. I see all these videos in the US of these beautiful playrooms. And um, we don't really have space for that. We live in the UK, just outside of London. So this video is how to make these spaces work for you in a slightly smaller space. As you'll see in the video, um, a lot of our play areas for Josh are either in the garden or we have um, a living room slash playroom that leads into our kitchen, so it's open plan. Some of it is Montessori inspired, but we're definitely not strictly Montessori. I just take little ideas from here and there that I like and that I think work for our family. So I hope you find the video useful and you enjoy it. If you do, please subscribe. I make lots of videos on play ideas and play content. I'm a primary teacher as well as a mum to a two year old. He's two next week. So this is our main living space where we spend all our time. It's actually a really good space for our family because it's quite open plan. So we've got like a little play area and this is where we watch TV and things. And then it leads right through to our kitchen. So it's a really handy space. It means that I can get on with jobs like cooking and things like that. And Josh can play and everything's nearby. And then this opens up to our garden up here. So as you come in, we've got this play mat here, which is actually quite a new purchase. We recently bought it. I think it was from John Lewis. And it's really great. It's really soft and it can be wiped clean. And then as you can see, we've got kind of like a Montessori inspired space. Having his toys on display like this so he can see them clearly and he knows what he's got, we find really useful. Montessori say you're only really supposed to have one thing per cubby hole, but that really hasn't really worked for us. We have slightly more. <laughs> Hello, future Amy here. So I didn't explain this very well in the video, but we rotate our toys that are on the shelf downstairs every two weeks, I'd say. And this way, um, Josh isn't overwhelmed by all the options of toys. He can see everything he has to play with and he tends to play with each toy for a bit longer. He's a lot more focused. Sometimes if you've got too much choice and too many toys, young children will just become overwhelmed and they won't really play with anything properly. They just flip from one thing to the other. So we store his toys that are out of rotation in these boxes on his wardrobe. Um, in the UK, we don't really have built-in closets, so storage is quite tricky. One for books, two for toys. It's his birthday soon so I've just recently taken out some old stuff that he doesn't really play with anymore and that's gone into storage in the attic for baby number two. I found these zippy wallets really useful for storing his toys so we can store his Duplo sets in here. Got like his animals. It's good for things like puzzles. Just things with lots of little pieces really. But these are all his toys that he's been using for the last couple of weeks. And I try and make sure there's a mix of different things. So there's like some fine motor, some imaginative play. Some of these things are always out. So over here, we've got his box of cars. He is vehicle obsessed. So this box is always here and it goes with the garage over here. This gets used for hours daily. So this could never really go away. And the other thing that stays out all the time is his box of trains and train track because again, this gets used a lot. Then at the moment, we've got some threading, some puzzles. He's really enjoying these. He's had these for maybe about six or seven months now. And they're just, um, I think they were from Teemu or TikTok shop. And they're different little houses with different animals inside. And we do a little bit of role play with these and he really just loves putting them inside the houses. The animals also spend a lot of time in these tractors. He is tractor obsessed. We always have a couple down here that are just for vehicles because that's what he does spend the majority of his time playing with. He's got his Tony box over there, which he really likes. And then we've just got some other toys. We've got a xylophone, Montessori rainbow, which we use a lot as like bridges for his cars, a Mr. Potato Head. And then we've got this from Love Every, where you just click in the pieces into the right colors. He really enjoys this at the moment as well. And then on this wall, we've got our front facing bookcase. If you haven't got one, I would really recommend one of these. Josh loves reading books. 
Up until about a month ago, he would just basically look at the pictures, but he's really into us reading the stories to him now and he listens properly. He does have a lot more books stored less prettily over here, um, but he generally always chooses the ones that are here, so I try and rotate them. And definitely having the front covers facing out really inspires him to think about what stories he wants to read. So again, if this was Montessori, they believe that everything should be um, real pictures and real life stories at this young age, using like everyday scenarios that the children are familiar with. So we have got some of those, like these Love Every Books, Baby is Coming, because we have another baby on the way. But then he also just really loves stories at the moment. Um, he's a big fan of the Michael Rosen books. He is obsessed with this book, The Little Blue Truck. If you have a child that really likes vehicles and animals, then this one might be one for them because we've read this one about a million times. And then other classics like The Tiger Who Came to Tea, Peepo and Bear Hunt. As we come into the kitchen area, we have a sensory um, bin over here, which has been really nice. He likes playing with this while I'm cooking because it's right by um, where I prepare food. And he's really enjoyed this. We have different things in this. We've had things like cornflakes, Rice Krispies, rice. He really enjoys transferring into different containers. At the moment, we've got some dried chickpeas and we've been doing a bit of color sorting. Having this table is really handy because it means I can leave something in here all week. Previously, I was having it in a tray, but that meant I had to keep cleaning it up each time. This table comes with a top that's got a chalkboard on one side and then you can cover it like this and then we can use it at snack time or to do colouring or play-doh on and then over here we've got his learning ladder which we use a bit for when he wants to help me with cooking or whether he, when he wants to do an activity up on the kitchen surface I think this one was from Kiddly Moon but I'll put a link it is quite hard to get good learning ladders in the UK most of them are from the US and then our last area over here in the kitchen is his play kitchen. Not a working kitchen like a lot of Montessori ones. He just loves using it for imaginative play. This one was from John Lewis. It's pretty aesthetically pleasing and he loves it. It's got lots of different fruit. He really likes cutting the fruit with his knife and pretending to prepare food for his bears. Little microwave. And then over here we've got his little Melissa and Doug cleaning set, which is really cute. Whenever he makes a bit of a mess with his chickpeas, he always goes and gets his broom and cleans them up, which, you know, I appreciate the thoughts, but it makes a bit more mess, really. The garden is a little messy at the moment. We often have lots of lawn toys out, like his beach ball, paddling pool, his cars. So he uses the lawn a lot. And then over here, we've got his little water table, which he's really enjoying with these little sea creatures at the moment. And he has lots of pouring with different jugs and funnels and things like that. So this is our favourite area of the garden through here and where Josh does a lot of his playing. He's got a DIY mud kitchen over here which we made with some friends out of some decking wood and this is where he spends a lot of his time. It's got all different little pots and pans and sieves and whisks that we got from the charity shop which I just store underneath in there. The hope is that as he gets older, we'll be able to make recipes and things like that. Um, at the moment, he just loves mixing in flowers and mud and water and making a lot of mess in different kinds of containers, but this keeps him occupied forever. And then we have some wood stumps for chairs and a little table that I got off um, Facebook Marketplace and painted as like a little dining table for them to serve their muddy recipes. This is the plum climbing wooden play center, which he really enjoys. He loves hiding in the little den under here. Um, and then it's got a rope climbing thing on this side, which he can't really do yet, but looking forward for him using that. And then he climbs up this side um, and it's got a little slide and some steps this side as well. So he really, really enjoys this. And then he's got a little sand pit here as well which he's had lots of use out of over the summer months. Although recently he's just enjoying putting the sand into the back of his car. That's the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and hopefully we'll see you again. Bye.